Good morning, guys. Welcome to Bisbon Ranch. It has officially been one year since living off the grid with our solar power system. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the total cost breakdowns of our power system, how we built it, how long it took, and how difficult it was to install. Basically, just run through the whole system and see what we would recommend doing, if it worked for us, what did and didn't work, things yeah. we would do differently. Just kind of the whole overview of having a completely off-grid system. So let's quickly go through the entire system, all of its components, where we got them, and the prices. We got these panels for $20 each from Santan Solar. It's a company that liquidates solar panels that were like on people's roofs or on businesses. And we got them, they came with a warranty. They work just like brand new. And they were only $20 each. We've got 30 of them here. So that's $600 worth of panels, total cost. And we had to go pick them up and bring them here ourselves. Almost everything we used to mount our solar panels is repurposed. Like we got this material, it's actually old oil field pipe, retired, and it's ultra heavy duty. This stuff is like two and seven eighths inches across, and I think it's between a schedule 40 and schedule 80, so it's like three fourths of an inch thick material. It's easy to weld, and it's ultra strong, and it was very affordable. I think we bought it at a place called Bonanza Pipe and Steel, it was like 60 bucks a stick. They were 30 feet long. We bought six of those. So I'll have to add that up what that cost, but uh, it was pretty affordable for, so the main bulk of the material we used for the, for the actual like solar panel structure. In fact, it's so stable that even these birds, like if they built a little nest up here, I think they've already hatched and flown away, but we left it up there. The other thing that's unusual about it is we built it tall enough to provide us and our trailer shade, which is just super crucial during the summer months. I mean, it's like, it's not that it's super hot, but the sun really, really heats things up. So having a little piece of shade was awesome. This is still within the legal requirements of a ground mount solar, it can only be a maximum of 10 feet tall, which this is below that. I believe we used a total of 25 or so bags of concrete. These go way down into the ground, like into the bedrock. They've got rebar down inside of it, like rebar cages. And then we use these threaded J bolts to actually mount the poles to it. So these aren't going anywhere. Then we use these stainless steel U bolts from a company called DX Engineering. They actually make like ham radio tower components and stuff like that. These were not cheap. I think they were 15 bucks a piece and we've got like 40 of them bolting this whole thing together. We want to make sure it was modular. So if we want to change things, move it around or install it in different, different configurations down the line, we'd be able to do that. So not a bad investment, but we did have to spend a lot of money to get those. We ended up getting like a super good deal on these kind of pre-owned Unistrut sticks. These are 10 foot galvanized Unistruts. They make hardware where you can like toggle uh, solar panels to bolt directly onto these. And I think we paid $10 a stick for them and there's 20 pieces in this entire array. We ended up adding these tension cable cross braces uh, before we put all the weight of the panels on top. This just stiffens everything up, it uses these swage fittings. These things here, they're swaged on, what we learned the word is. It's got these turnbuckles so we can keep tension on it. That just makes sure everything is rigid. It doesn't sway in the wind. It doesn't move. Um, I think that this total cost was like 150 bucks for everything to install these. To wire the panels up, I bought 200 feet of 12 gauge PV wire from Amazon. I believe it was $100 for the entire collection of wire. We got one red and one black. And then I got for $40, I got the MC4 connector kit. So I just fabricated my own wire lengths to connect the panels together and to run them into the actual battery and inverter room. And the way I did it is um, I've got 24 panels actually powering the inverters and that's what charges the batteries. And they're in four separate legs of six panels each. So the way this is set up is there are six in series and there's four of those and those are all going directly into the inverters. We got three of these uh, boxes that are just the PV disconnect boxes. So we can switch the panels off from what they're running to. This one only has the one leg because this is our uh, panels that are powering our air conditioner. These panels 
do not power the battery room or the inverter that goes straight to our AC system, which is solar powered. These were the same price, but there are two separate legs inside these. So I've got one, two, three, four circuits. So this is our server battery rack. These are a 48 volt battery system. They actually charge up to like 54, 55 volts. So think that they are 100 amp hours at that voltage. So total, this is like 30 kilowatt hours of power in this thing. Massive amount of juice. You can see from these lights here, this is already fully charged with less than an hour of sun today. This system uses comm cables to talk to the battery so that they self balance each other. And then this talks to the main inverter, which is this one, and that makes sure that everything is properly being charged and not overcharged so that it doesn't like ruin your batteries over time or doesn't stop your charge, things like that. It's important that they talk to each other. So we're running two 6,500 watt inverters. These are the EG4 6,500 EXs. Um, and when you run two of them, you can actually program them so that they're running in a split phase configuration, meaning each one is producing 120 volts, 120 volts, and they're opposite phase. So they actually tie together down here in this box at the bottom, and that creates a, literally a 240 volt system. So we have a 60 amp plug outside, we can weld off of it, we can hook up a trailer with multiple ACs, stuff like that. Up the battery rack, it came with this case that they go in, it came with these two inverters. It came with all of like the PV disconnect switches, pretty much everything you need to hook it up minus the panels and panel wiring. And the kit was, I think it was $11,500 for all of it, but we chose to pay an additional $300 and get this load center separately. This is not sold with the kit, but by buying this, this actually has all of our 120 circuit breakers down here, it ties it into the 240 down there, and then it has built-in PV disconnects, and built-in battery switches. Well, I think the last thing that we haven't talked about in our whole system is this AC unit that we also got from Signature Solar. This is the EG4 12,000 BTU mini split, and this is powered by solar panels most of the time. We also have it plugged into our battery system so that at night it can still work if we need it to, but this thing has been an absolute game changer. It's out of everything we use, I think we use this the most on the ranch. To put it into perspective, I'm looking at the app that kind of goes over our energy usage with it. We have put 900,000 watt hours of power through this AC. And of that, I think 700,000 of that is free, free power from the sun, like directly panels to the AC running it. So it's ice cold in here. We've got it set at 75. These lights mean that it's running on the solar right here. So we, we don't even have this running off of our batteries right now. We use it for heat in the winter. I think we, this is actually the very first thing that we installed for the power system was just this and some panels. That way we were able to keep it cool while we were installing the rest of the stuff to get the rest of the power. But man, what a game changer. It's just awesome. Almost a megawatt of power has gone through this thing. I can't even, I don't even know how much that saved us, but I love it. This is my favorite thing ever made. did all of this cost us? Drum roll? $15,902. Yeehaw! That's not that expensive, right? <laughs> I mean, it is a lot up front, but you know, you gotta pay for freedom, I guess. Yeah. So Yeah, we will never have electricity bill ever again. And it feels real darn nice. I will say that. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome to be generating our own power from the sun. So what is different about our lives using a system like the where we make our own power? Well, the no bills is a great thing. I would say we have to pay attention to the weather a lot more. 
Um, we get, you know, over 300 days a year, we do get a lot of sun, but sometimes we do have cloudy days. Like today, it was cloudy almost all day today. We were still generating power, but not as much as we normally do. But yeah, I would say on, you know, if there was three consecutive cloudy days, we might need to be a little mindful and cautious of what we're using electricity wise. So far, it hasn't been a problem out here with all the sunshine. No, we haven't had and, any problems yet. And the last thing is, how long did it take to build? Well, the actual solar panel structure took us two entire months. Yes unfortunately we thought it was going to be two weeks and that was far from it nothing works like that no, but the no. actual battery and inverter uh install we had going in like a day everything went smooth yeah it was all plug and play real easy and straightforward so with our power system working without really any maintenance needed and pretty seamlessly uh, you would think, cool, we did the perfect install. We can just move on, never learn from it. But that's not what this is. This is a completely DIY setup. And just like everything else in retrospect, there's gonna be some things that I would have done differently. So let me show you those real quick. The first issue is where I chose to put these switches so that we can actually disconnect the solar panel power from the inverters. I don't know why I thought it'd be a good idea to put them on the outside in such a slim shaped thing right here. I could have just put them on the inside of the wall. For some reason, I put them out here. They are waterproof. They're rated for rain. The problem is anytime a crazy electrical storm comes in, I want to switch these off. Then there's no physical connection from the panels to the inverter. So if we did take a lightning strike, it's a lot less likely that we're going to damage our equipment. So when it comes through and it's a lot of thunder, first thing I do is I turn these off during the thunderstorm. So having this little tiny gap for access to our solar panel switches, it's not like a big deal really. It's more of just an inconvenience, especially since I have to go out there. Normally it's nighttime when the storms are rolling through and uh, I don't know, there could be spiders, bugs, all kinds of stuff, but whatever, it works for now. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal unless I can't fit in there eventually, which might happen if I keep eating pizzas like this. I don't know, what do you guys think? Put in the comments, do you like your pizzas burnt more like this or do you like them less done? I like them a little bit more burnt. I'm one of those weirdos. Heather hates it. She's obviously not here right now, otherwise I would not be making it that burnt. <laughs> the other thing that I would do differently if I were to start over again has to do with, as you can see in this array, there are gaps between the panels. That's because the type of hardware that we use to hold the panels down, and it's really strong, this can withhold like 100 mile an hour winds, it leaves gaps between the panels just because that's where the hardware is bolted in. And the thing about it is, it's like a wasted opportunity for rain catchment. Where we live in Cochise County, Arizona, it's completely legal and it's actually recommended for people to catch rainwater. Uh, that way we could funnel it back into our cistern, use it for all kinds of things, showers, doing dishes, stuff like that. And we're just not catching any of it. All it's doing is just running through it. So it gives us plenty of shade. It's a nice like block from the sun, which is enjoyable. But on a rainy day, we can't just hang out underneath this awning thing because it does get water through it so i don't know maybe i would come up with a different way to either hold the panels down or to fill these gaps it's not like a big deal but i, I see it as a missed opportunity and if i could redesign it i'd come up with a way to maybe catch the water in a gutter system that falls through there or something like that the last thing that we would have done differently has to do with the fact that our battery room and inverter room is just too well sealed and too well insulated, meaning that it does get hot in there in the summer. It stays warm in the winter, but in the summer you don't want it to get that hot. So I actually have already repaired or changed some of the plans of this to make it work. Right now we're in the middle of summer and it stayed nice and cool in there. And I'll show you what I did. I actually installed this like metal door it's a security door which is covered in screen material i installed that on the outside so that if we want we can actually crack that interior door just to give it some airflow then it doesn't get nearly as hot it gets tops out probably in the 90s um, i don't think it ever gets up to even 100 in there just because of the insulation and then now we've got airflow so that's worked out well the other thing that i did is right here i've got two fans powered by a single solar panel. This is directly panel to fan. So when it's the sunniest, which means it's also the hottest, 
there's circulating fans so we'll just keep moving inside air to the out and outside air to the in just to regulate the temperatures and with that running it's never gotten more than like i would say 90 something degrees in there and it just stays stable it doesn't get any hotter 93 that's like a 93 degree temperature outside and inside here there we go i don't know if you can see that and this is August in Arizona, the end of August. So it doesn't really get much hotter than this. And I would say that's safe. That's a safe temperature for our battery system and our inverters. So better to keep things cool, especially with electronics. <laughs> it's so nice outside. We just thought we'd take you guys on our daily dog walk while we finish up the video. And the one thing we have not talked about yet about our solar off-grid system is why we went with Signature Solar as the supplier for our equipment. Yeah, uh, one of the reasons is because they are so big on DIYers, which we are, and the system that we bought from them was plug and play, really easy to install, and we didn't have any issues or uh, complaints. The other reason why I really liked signature solar we didn't even find this out until later but this is the only time i've ever heard of a company doing this they will actually let you upgrade your old equipment right now to get the newest stuff mm -hmm. like our system's been working great it's like no issues but the new stuff you can actually plug way more like photovoltaic power into it you can put like yeah. they've got ones that are 12,000 watts can go into it 18,000 watts and some of them and they're letting people who have our inverters which are now considered like old technology in upgrade to the newest stuff and you basically just pay I think it's like 750 bucks per inverter and you get the newest most up-to-date one with a new warranty mm -hmm. or you can pay $1,500 and get like the bigger all-in-one inverter and I'm kind of tempted yeah. to do it. <laughs> but we'd like to know what you guys think. Would you do it if you were us? We don't have any issues with our current system and setup, so should we do it? <laughs> we, yeah. want, we want some feedback and uh, see what you guys think. And also, we would like the ability to add wind power, like wind generated power, mm -hmm. to this system. And our current inverters are kind of like maxed out with how much power they can take. Yeah. So if we could get some advice in our comment section about wind generators, that yeah. would be awesome. We're looking for recommendations, yeah. like uh, what works, what doesn't work. We do live in a normally pretty windy area. Yep. Not right now, it's calm today. But <laughs> most of the time it's windy out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you guys think. And also I wanted to say that we in no way work for or are being paid by signature solar we no. actually paid full price for all of our gear they liked one of our other videos that we did showing the install of the eg4 inverters and battery system mm -hmm. and so they gave us an affiliate link and we're going to put that in the description box of this video yep so and we'll, we'll also offer a uh, discount code that you can enter if you are looking into buying a any equipment from them it'll be bizbone ranch and um, the affiliate link with the code will be in our description box below yeah so if any of you guys are like you know finger hovering above the purchase button and you're watching this video just to get some like final feedback or thoughts i would say yes give it a go and please use our affiliate link if you decide to do that yeah it helps us out tremendously because we've been saving up and we're trying to finish our dome and this would definitely help us out by uh getting our dome finished. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you next time.